who Dobbs heavily covered the anti-immigration referendum that Protect Arizona Now was advocating. You never mentioned um, the affair at all. Her controversial selection is head of this and group. And she was featured in how many reports? The point is you covered Protect Arizona Now extensively, and though, and this is certainly significant when it turns out that the head of the board of Protect Arizona Now is... Um, yeah, when was the last time she was on the show? No, the important point is you didn't report the news of this very controversial is it, is racist possible? woman who headed Protect Arizona Now, which was virtually in every Arizona paper. The it's question is what you report reporting? and what you don't. Reporting? Yeah, of course, this is in 2004. The point is what you report, Lou, and what you don't report. Well, you know, Amy, I don't know what to tell you because, uh, you know, based on the, your focus here today, you have focused on probably three or four reports, as best I can figure, out of uh, more than five years of reporting on the issue. If that smacks uh, at all to you of reasonable, proportionate uh, uh, journalism on your part, I mean, God bless you. Uh, if that's what you believe, God bless you. But I think you're coming from an ideological uh, uh, position that has just absolutely skewed uh, that perception and that perspective. My, I admit my ideological position, mm -hmm. which is that I think that the Council of Conservative Citizens is a racist group, and it's yeah. problematic not and to identify guests that you have on your show and absolutely that are connected with this group. Unfortunately, I am fallible, and I am a man who has made some mistakes. But the reality is the body of work stands for itself, and you know that. And the, and the reality is the facts are irresistible. Illegal immigration into this country is absolutely not in the American interest. And that is a reality you're going to have to contend with. Uh, Lou, Lou uh, uh, no, th that fact is not clear. For, you know, first of all... Not to you. Uh, no, yeah, exactly. And I have a, a right. different perspective on sure. that, so you'll, you'll indulge me. Sure. Uh, but the, the, the fact is that immigration policy in this country has always been a means of rallying uh, anger among the public. The, oh, the, yes, it has. The, nonsense. Lou, let, let, me, finish. let me finish. Let me finish, Lou, please. Ridiculous. Uh, all right, go ahead. The Chinese. In 1882, the Chinese Exclusion Act, what was the, what was the claim against the Chinese? Small population uh, of, of, of Chinese immigrants. The claim was that, that they were involved in drugs, that they were bringing crime, that they were a danger to the country, and the country passed, passed in 1882 a Chinese Exclusion Act. The same thing in the 1920s. Are you holding me responsible? Or no, no, what I'm telling you is that this has been done over and over there. again. This has been done over and over again. What? According Be precisely, to you let me finish, Lou. Precisely because because the country is an immigrant nation. It's easy to divide the people How? along ethnic and, and racial lines over the You're issue the of immigration. You're over the, the issue of immigration. That. No, I'm not. Your no, I'm not. Ethnos you know very well that 75% of the, of the undocumented immigrant population in this country comes from Latin America. And not only that, 65% comes from one country, Mexico. That's right. So the, the crux of the illegal immigration problem in the United States is the question of Mexico and the United States and the right. relationships between Mexico and the United States. Mexicans are the largest source of immigration to this country from any nationality. What is your point? So, so that the question is that the, there is a a huge disparity between the economic levels in Mexico and the economic levels in the United States. And you have properly said many times on your show that American companies are creating the problems rather than helping to alleviate the problems. Mm -hmm. it, all that would be needed to do is to raise the economic level in Mexico and the, and the entire illegal immigration population problems would decline in this country. And, and not only that, but the country, if it had a higher immigration quota, are you giving me instruction, or are you telling me what we agree upon? Uh, no, we don't agree. We don't agree because you are demonizing uh, the uh, illegal immigration as a as a separate issue, rather than dealing with the reality is that Mexico and the United States must find a way to build you, better, closer economic ties and raise the levels for both is, countries. As I take it, you and Amy believe that if we just had more illegal immigration, the crime rate would drop. Uh, and uh, the economy would boom in this country. No. That's on its face absurd. No. Secondly, I have over the over five years in reporting on this issue repeatedly pointed out that the investment in Mexico by the United States has been paltry and absurd and diverted to China instead of to this hemisphere and particularly Mexico. The results could have been quite different. So when you talked about these uh, these issues, you're, 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 you're preaching to the choir and you know that. Uh, the fact that you would focus on a couple of reports on 
uh, tuberculosis, leprosy, the issue of uh, the CCC in a, in a flash, what amounts to a flash frame. Folks. And all the guests connected. And all of those guests. How many would you say? Five? Oh, I can keep going. I uh, just thought I, I should give I, someone else a chance here to have it. No, I really, I think you should Let keep going because the reality is illegal immigration in this country is not going to be overwhelmed by uh, this nonsense. Uh, the, the reality is the Southern Poverty Law Center is an advocacy group right now. The ADL is an advocacy group right now, pro-illegal immigration, pro-open borders, both of you ideologically. I understand that, and I can deal with that. But the reality is there is such a thing as the national interest. There is such a thing as the common good, and it's not ethnocentric. It's not group and identity politics. It's all about this country, because this political system makes this economy possible. And the fact that people are starving in Mexico, uh, and my heart goes out to them, uh, the reality is there are five and a half billion people in the world who are more impoverished than that, those folks in Mexico. And that land bridge does not give, give Philippe Calderon or Vicente Fox or, or any other group of activists uh, the right to dictate to U.S. immigration policy. That's the reality. Let me ask you about national sure. sovereignty um, in a moment. Uh, but first, I want to turn to an excerpt of your show from August 22nd. This year? This year. All right. One day after President Bush signed legislation here in Washington to build a border fence, the government of Mexico is threatening the sovereignty and national security of the United States. President Vicente Fox and President-elect Philippe Calderon are both asserting that the United States has no right to build such a fence along our southern border. At the same time, the White House and its allies in corporate America appear determined to create a new North American Union incorporating Canada, Mexico, and the United States. Such a union would, in effect, create a giant nation. Lou Dobbs, August 22nd, 2007. Sure. Well, this, this concept of a giant nation, could you expound on that? The North American Union? Well, yes. you're uh, coming from the 2005 meeting uh, with uh, uh, Stephen Harper, the Prime Minister of Canada, Vicente Fox, and the President of Mexico, and George W. Bush. I'm sure you're still delighted to know he's President of the United States. Uh, met and laid out the foundation through the Security and Prosperity Partnership. Uh, what has uh, ensued since then, there have been a number of high-level meetings, uh, military, business, and uh, governmental leaders, all of which uh, have been uh, uh, closed to the press. and. Uh, uh, all toward uh, harmonizing, if you will, relations between the two uh, and uh, diminishing the border and uh, the encumbrances to commerce, uh, moving straight ahead. Just to be clear, it could have been 2006, that report, so I want to be factually accurate. It was either this year or well, last year. You no but let me give was. you one more clip, and that is around the issue of the Minutemen. Uh, sure. This um, uh, was the Minutemen Project, organizers calling their effort a peaceful protest over the government's failure to secure its borders. Both the Mexican government and Bush administration have described the Minutemen as vigilantes. You have been a vocal supporter. I just want to be clear to the journal and to this audience. I support the Minuteman Project and the fine Americans who make it up and all they've accomplished fully, relentlessly, and proudly. That's you, Lou. Bill That's Parmley, me. a minimum leader in uh, Goliad County, Texas, quit the group because of what he described, widespread racism. Um, th another Texas Minuteman, Janet Ahrens, had resigned because members, she said, wanted to shoot the taco meat. Um, you never mentioned either of these people. Um, why not talk about these people quitting because they're concerned about how racist this group is? Well, frankly, I didn't know about it. I don't think it's a, I, what makes them so newsworthy. And secondly, the reality is the president called the uh, Minutemen uh, vigilantes immediately after they were formed. Uh, the, the idea that I would support volunteerism and the, and the nature of the call.